And with that, please welcome to the program this morning, David Baker. Good morning, David. Good morning. Thank you for very, very much for having me on the show this morning. David, welcome to the program. Um, this is almost kind of a sneak preview, in a sense, of uh, some of the things you guys will be talking about during the TMC fall meeting in, in Raleigh, North Carolina. You're going to have an open forum talking about uh, something that uh, Robert just mentioned, aluminum. And maybe that's a good place to uh, start our conversation. Steel construction versus all aluminum. And uh, maybe seeing some of, the, some of your insight on that. Well, for years, the the industry ran uh, initially solid aluminum trailers with wooden floors. As the uh, shippers demanded uh, to, uh, that flatbeds be able to haul more payload, uh, the manufacturers came out with a with trailers that were uh, steel uh, main beams, but aluminum flooring uh, and side rails, and that was no form most commonly known as a combo trailer and that the uh as things uh there were always uh some aluminum trailers out there they but they were for very specific very um high quality loads uh, you would say so um as the industry has um as it, it gained more carry weight with emissions and so on down the line, shippers were still demanding that we, as truckers, continue to haul the payloads that uh, they demanded. So the trailer became the next target to find ways to economically reduce your carry weight uh, to maintain that payload for the shippers. Aluminum trailers became a lot more attractive at that point. And certainly with all the uh, the phase one, phase two that's going on with the new regulations, trailers are now getting renewed attention in terms of fuel economy, too. So that may not be the initial thrust of what you guys are talking about, because it sounds like you're trying to just maintain the tear weight that you already have uh, with all the other things being thrown onto the tractor, I suppose. Isn't that right? That's correct. And uh, fuel economy... It's, while it's important, uh, is uh, something that is is from a aluminum trailer way is a I guess a second bonus because we still focus first on being able to provide the weight that the shippers want to want us to haul. How much weight are we actually talking about, David? Is is it enough to really make a difference in terms of the weight savings? I mean, you're going to save weight, but is it is it really uh, going to show up on the bottom line? I guess is the way to put it. Uh, from a if you take a 48 foot combo trailer uh, and spec it the same way, but uh, it is a 48 foot aluminum trailer. There's about a thousand pound savings in the, in the mm. carry weight between the two. So that's enough to be well, that's a lot. That that could be your that's your APU right there, Dave, and then some, huh? Mm hmm. That's correct. You can put an extra APU on one for the <laughs> driver and one for the co driver, right? <laughs> um, and and then then you're also uh, supplementing that with um, aluminum wheels and everything. Uh, wide base tires disc brakes so these are the trailer of the future i guess by and large because you guys at boyd are planning to go all aluminum within the next three four years and that's correct there's many fleets out there that flatbed fleets that are already all aluminum uh but we're we on the more conservative side have are transitioning our fleet into it um and we'll hope to hopefully be there by be an all aluminum fleet by the end of by the end of 2019, uh, and I believe that that will offer uh, the ability for uh, shippers to uh, add more uh, more weight to it. Because remember, very few flatbeds uh, tube out. We run out of weight long before we run out of space. Got it. Got it. Um... What about the return on investment in terms of uh, longevity of the trailers, um, any of the physical problems that these trailers may have? Let's go back to maybe comparing those to the combos, uh, trade cycle, um, 
problems that you know come in i know you can't do a, a, a lot of welding here so um, you're bolting a lot of stuff what are some of the trade-offs i guess you might say well the the actually the bolting on that you talk about on an aluminum trailer actually adds benefit to it um the cost is significantly more from a combo to aluminum but uh as improvements have been made in aluminum trailers, uh, uh, with the uh, years ago we'd call cracking, which which is the stress cracks that aluminum because it doesn't flex the same way that a, a steel trailer might. But the um, the bolting actually allows you to the point of you can see this the trade cycle of the average combo trailer is in the eight year range. The trade cycle of a aluminum trailer now is in the 10-year range, but the bolting on of the suspension uh, upper coupler and of the dolly legs onto the aluminum body can allow you to actually do some refurbing of the trailer and extending its life. Ah, so you can make make it up for it on the uh, on the uh, rehab side of it too, because it's obviously it's a lot easier to just replace components when they're bolted on. You know, along those lines, I was thinking if you have a combo trailer, the corrosion must have been a real issue with combo trailers because inherently, when you have dissimilar metals, that sets up that cold galvanic corrosion process, doesn't it? Yes, and uh, and combo trailers, just like anyone else that that deals with with uh, steel. And exposed steel in that um, throughout the United States and Canada, they, we we all fight a corrosion. Um, you know the manufacturers work very hard in providing coatings and painting, and you still will battle the uh, corrosion from the different road salts and chemicals they put on the they put they put on the road surfaces from there. It is you're less apt to fight that in the trailer body when you when you have an aluminum trailer out there. You still have the the steel axles and, and so different components, but your corrosion uh is not as uh as difficult to deal with on aluminum trailers. But I well, imagine the underwrite guard also is aluminum when you spec it. Uh yes. It is. We do as much as aluminum as we can. There's no, uh, there are actually dolly legs out there that are aluminum that we can bolt on to it. Um, and, uh, and we then, the underwrite itself is built with aluminum. Again, it's, it's weight that we're looking for. Those components, while they cost more when you look at it on a dollar per pound, how much per pound it costs you, the additional, um, return on investment uh, can return back to you uh, with the load, with being able to provide the additional load load capacity. And most importantly, without a loss of strength, right? Correct. It still has the ratings, and you can get a rating if you're r- rated on a, a combo flatbed to be able to haul 50,000 pounds in a 10-foot section for the case of, like, uh, a bit large steel coals and that. You can have that same rating built into an aluminum trailer as well.